Hi guys, Lewis here and in this video I'm going to give you a quick rundown of GMAS. This is an email outreach tool and one that I've been using quite a lot recently. I think it's really good for scaling up outreach and it will help you land a lot of links in a very short period of time. Now to be clear about what GMAS is and what it isn't, it's not an all-in-one outreach tool. So it's not like Buzzstream or Ninja Outreach. It doesn't handle the prospecting and it doesn't scrape contact information. It handles the actual outreach part and it does it very, very well. Now GMAS is a Chrome extension. It plugs straight into Gmail. So I'm gonna switch over to Gmail now and you'll see exactly how that looks. Now there's not much evidence of GMAS being installed here. And there's a couple of buttons at the top. Uh, there's a few labels on the side here. And if I press compose, you can see a couple of buttons down here. Now that's pretty much all you get with GMAS. So let's talk about the main draw of this tool which is the mail merge functionality. And this pulls information from a central database. And GMAS uses Google Sheets as that database. So we're gonna switch over to Google Sheets and I'll show you how that works. Bear with me. I actually have some dummy prospects in here. Uh, obviously Tom, Dick and Harry are, um, they're not real people, but you can literally have as many rows and as many columns as you want. And that's potentially thousands of prospects. And GMAS will pull information for each of those prospects. And if I switch back to Gmail, I'm gonna connect the sheet up and I'll show you it in action. So to connect a sheet, you just click this button up here and it will bring up a pop-up. Now you have to select your sheet here. And obviously you have to be uh, logged into the same Google account as the one you made the, uh, the, the spreadsheet on. Otherwise it's not gonna be able to match up. It's not gonna uh, appear in this list. Now before I connect the spreadsheet, I just wanna point out the keep duplicates uh, option here. So GMAS automatically removes duplicate email addresses in your spreadsheet unless you check this button. Now obviously it's a good idea to keep that unchecked because you don't wanna send uh, multiple emails to the same email address. So I'm gonna connect the uh, spreadsheet and as you can see, it's pulled in Tom, Dick and Harry here. It's, it knows what the email addresses are so that it'll put them straight in the to field and all that's left to do is craft your email. Now I've already written one out so I'm gonna paste it in and where the magic really happens here is with the text replacements and these are in the uh, curly brackets or braces depending on where you're from in the world and they're essentially just the same as your column heading and GMAS will pull in the information for each of these prospects and you can also use it in the subject line so I can say hey, name, and I'll delete the rest. And that will also work. Now, obviously this is a bad email. It's just an example, but I, I want to show you that you can use uh, text replacements throughout your email and even in the follow-ups, which I'm gonna get to in a second. Now, before you send the campaign, you wanna have a look at the settings because there's a couple of things you need to know. So to bring up the settings, you just click the little arrow down here and it will pull up this box. So I'll quickly run through these. And the first thing here is the send test email. Now. All you have to do is put your email address in, press the send button, and it will send a test email to that email address. The problem with this is that if your email is not on the spreadsheet, your text replacements will not work. They will just be blank. And that kind of defeats the purpose of sending a test email. So what you really need to do is add your own email to the spreadsheet for every campaign. And that way you can send a test email and you'll be able to see that everything's working. Obviously, I didn't do it in this case. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I just forgot. But this is an example, so it's irrelevant. When you're doing this, I do recommend adding your own email. Next, we've got load content, and this allows you to pull in your past uh, emails that you sent with GMAS. So if you know that there's a particular email that you wanna use for this and you've already written it before for a different campaign, you can just pull that in and make some tweaks to it. It does save quite a bit of time, so I really like that feature. Your text replacements, which are your column headings, are shown here. And if you, for if you forget what they are or you, you need to check the spelling or anything like that, you can just open up the campaign settings and actually click on one of these to insert them in the email. So if I click email, it's gonna put it straight into my Compose window. Now I'm gonna bring up the settings again because I'm not done. Next, we've got the add unsubscribe link. And this just puts a link at the bottom of your emails so that your prospects can stop receiving your emails if they choose. The problem with this is that for our purposes, for link building, we're trying to send emails that look natural. We, we wanna reach out to people on a very personal level. And this makes our emails look automated. So it's probably not a good idea to add your unsubscribe link to these kind of emails, but I can definitely see where this would be useful for other types of outreach and for uh, drip campaigns and things like that. So again, not really useful for us in this case. Next, we've got tracking, and this is super important because if you don't track your campaigns, you're not gonna know which emails are working for you. And once you know what's working for you, you can start to get much better response rates and much better placement rates. So when you first use GMAS, I'm not sure these are checked automatically. I think you need to go in and uh, enable these and, and it will be remembered for, the, for uh, future campaigns. But definitely check that these are enabled so that you can keep on top of what's working and what's not working. Next, we've got action and this allows you to create drafts instead of sending the campaign immediately. So you can actually check each individual email and preview it before sending it off. But that means you also can't uh, blast those emails out in one go, you have to actually send them individually. So that's the catch with doing this. It does take a bit more time. 
I just prefer to use the send test email feature here. Um, that's good enough for me, but I will leave that to you to decide. Okay, so press list. So if I just click plus here, it brings up a box and these are all previously sent campaigns. It remembers all the emails that I've sent to you before. So I can press command A or control A depending on what machine I'm using and that will remove all these email addresses from this campaign. So I don't bug the same people that I've already reached out to. So this is a really, really good feature. I use this every single time to make sure that I'm not annoying people because then they're just gonna flag me and that's bad news. Next is the big one, it's the auto follow-up. So if I click plus here again, you can preset follow-up emails until you get a reply. Here I might set a follow-up after three days and then I'll do a second stage and I'll set a follow-up after seven days. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Obviously I need to write these out. I'm not gonna do that now but you get the point. And honestly, you get eight stages here, but that's far too many for um, a link building outreach campaign. You're just gonna really piss people off if you do that. So just keep it to a maximum of two, in my opinion. And by the way, like I said before, you can use text replacements in these follow-up emails. So if you have the prospect's name, make sure you use it here because that will definitely increase your reply rates. And this feature alone will skyrocket your placement rates because really the magic is in the follow-up with these things. I've had campaigns where that most of my links have come from follow-up emails and not the initial email that I send out. So definitely, definitely use this feature when you're using GMAS. So I'm gonna close this now and talk about the next one, which is spread out. Spread out is good for warming up new accounts. And obviously you can get around Gmail sending limits using this as well, because you can break large campaigns into multiple days. If you have a free Gmail account, you can send up to 500 emails. And if you have a paid Gmail account, which is a G Suite account, you can send uh, 2,000 emails a day. So if you have a really large list, you can use this to get around those limits. But like I said, if you have a brand new account, this is also a good way to just ease in a bit instead of you know blasting out thousands of emails within a very short space of time. Scheduling, this is um, kind of obvious what it does, but basically if you wanna get higher open rates, you can use scheduling to land in people's inbox at the optimal time. Now, a lot of people say this isn't really worth worrying about. I think if you have a large enough campaign uh, you could probably take some time to set this up and it would be worth your time. Even if it's only uh, you know, a slight increase in open rate, that percentage could be significant if you have enough prospects. Personally, I don't worry about that, but again, I'm gonna leave that one up to you. And when you're done with this, you just literally press the GMAS button here and it will send to all of your prospects. Now, I'm not gonna do that because this obviously isn't real, it's just an example, but there is one more thing I need to talk about which is very important and that is deliverability. Now, deliverability is the percentage of your outreach emails that make it to the inbox. There are a lot of factors at play, but one in particular is the tracking domain. And that's what's used to track the links in your campaigns. So GMAS gives everyone a tracking domain by default, but the problem with that is that everyone shares the same tracking domain. And if it has a bad reputation, which it probably will because a ton of spammers use GMAS, then you're gonna be affected by that as well. But fortunately, you can request a custom tracking domain, and that will be unique to you and you can build your own sending reputation and get much better deliverability. And you can also request a dedicated domain, which uses your own domain to uh, help you with branding and credibility. So when people hover over your link, they're gonna see your domain instead of something random that they're not really familiar with. And there'll be a link in the article to, uh, to show you how you can do that. But I highly recommend that you request a custom tracking domain when you start using GMAS, it doesn't cost anything extra and it's going to improve your deliverability. And actually there is one more thing that I have to talk about, which is the reporting. Now, if you go over here, you can click campaigns and you'll get the reporting for all of your campaigns. I'm gonna click one here as an example. Honestly, it's not that nice to look at, but you do get a lot of information here and you can see which of your campaigns perform the best and then you can repeat that on a larger scale. So this is definitely an area that you wanna be looking at and making adjustments based on what you see. And that's really the bulk of what GMAS does. And I'm gonna quickly talk about the pricing before I end this video. So I'm gonna switch over to the pricing page. Now you might look at this and think, oh wow, $6.95 a month, that's really cheap. I'm gonna go for that. But the problem is you, you get uh, a footer included on your emails and you don't get the auto follow-up feature. And for those two reasons, it's absolutely not worth going for the minimal package. The footer itself will tell everyone that you send an email to that you're using an outreach tool and that will put people off immediately. And the auto follow-up feature is one of the best things about GMAS. If you take that away, you take a lot away from this tool as a whole. And really it's worth paying the extra few dollars just to get that feature because it will result in a ton more links for you at the end of the day. So even the standard package uh, is no good because you don't get the auto follow-ups. And really what you need here is the premium package. But this is for a free Gmail account. If you have a G Suite account, you're gonna have to pay a bit more. So if I scroll up here, I can press Google Apps and you'll see we actually get closer to $20 a month for this package. And this is only for an individual. If I switch to team, you can see it starts at $89 a month. So GMS can be expensive depending on what you need, but they actually do have a free plan, which is great for starting out. 
you get up to 50 emails a day. It includes auto follow-ups and it doesn't apply any footers on the email. So you really get a lot of the benefits of the premium plan, but you just get a cap on the number of emails you can send a day. But I think it's a really good place to start out and you can upgrade from there if you're happy with the results. So that's GMAS. Uh, like I said, I really, really like this tool. It's super effective for white hat link building and they're constantly developing and improving GMAS. They listen to user feedback and they implement a lot of what people are asking for. And the email support is also really fast and reliable. So I highly recommend you check out GMAS and I hope this was helpful. I will see you in the next video.